that are going over to Lombok to provide assistance after the earthquake. There's the ambulances, there's the trucks providing supplies. We are in the truck in a pretty big queue just waiting to jump on the freight ferry to Lombok. There were three major earthquakes within two weeks. The largest was 6.9 magnitude. More than 500 people have been killed and hundreds of thousands of people are now displaced. This is Abel's house and they were sitting here watching television when the earthquake happened. Um, they've already cleaned out all the furniture and everything. So it's just um, a mess right now. So Kala Gempa? Yeah. Yep. So they're already trying to fix the house. So with the cracks, but uh, you can see the roof, it's, there's no roof. The family is now sleeping in a tent uh, just outside the house, so they're just showing me now where they've been sleeping the happened. Okay, so there's 12 people sleeping in here right now. All this work here, this is all new since the earthquake. They've all been busy fixing, clearing up. It was a shop before, like a motorbike. Uh, mechanic. They've already built this whole new roof since the earthquake and you saw all the ladies out the back um, doing the peanut farming so they've still got work. Um, they just grow the peanuts just over here so they're busy fixing the shop here so that they can get back to normal as soon as possible. We're going completely off road here, off the main road down into around the mountains where we're told there hasn't been much help yet to see. There's 200 people sleeping under these tarpaulins that have been set up after all their homes crumbled during the earthquake. I went to Lombok to document and oversee a delivery of supplies from a fundraiser by some prominent travel bloggers who raised six and a half thousand US dollars on Instagram. So because we're here delivering on the same day, we've been able to buy a heap of fresh food to go and deliver to this village. Giving us discounts, packing it up, throwing in their own extras for donations. And locals did some trauma relief for the children, which brought the families together. So dinner's just been served now. We've got the rice, vegetables, tofu, fish. It's like the feeling of like Christmas dinner or um, a big family special occasion. That's the feeling that I've got here right now. It's this one here, she's telling me I have to go and eat with her. <laughs> They're starting to do the demolition. Right now, the school's gone, businesses aren't happening, so everyone's been chipping in. The school teacher was here today helping with this demolition. This is one of hundreds of camps like this, so you can see how much time it's gonna take to get everything demolished and then rebuilt and people are living back to a normal life again. You can't comprehend it until you drive through the streets and you realise how many of these camps you see that just dotted in, along the entire stretch. A lot of these villages are poor to begin with, so when disaster strikes, they don't really have the spare cash to go and buy what they need. The Indonesian government is handling the humanitarian effort. They didn't declare a national disaster, which would have allowed foreign aid to stream straight in, but local charities are helping, and further earthquakes are making it harder, causing further damage to Lombok, but also to Sumbawa, the next island east. You might not have heard about that because it's not a tourist island, but I can tell you from local contacts I've spoken to at Sumbawa that homes and businesses there have been destroyed too and they're now in the same situation. It might drop out of the news but you need to know that these people are there and they really need our help so please send them love, send them good vibes and if you can send a few dollars to help them out. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you again soon.